Hey everyone, Secretly White Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a classic review, a classic review of a D DJ Shadows introducing. Mr. DJ Shadow is a West Coast DJ and producer, and this is his debut album. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mr. Shadow is essentially one of instrumental hip hop's True Trailblazers. Not only did he create a smooth, entrancing, and textured ode to the hip hop instrumental on this album, but from what I understand, this is actually one of popular music's first almost entirely sample based albums, which is pretty cool because most, if not all, of the samples on this record were lifted off of vinyl albums bought in record shops, which, you know. People used to do that. Maybe I'll buy one of them vinyls one day. See what all the hubbub's about. If you do a bit of digging on the internet, you can find a full list of all the samples on this record. But sort of just, you know, lightly gazing over it, there is a pretty wide array of source material on this thing. People like jazz fusion drummer greats Billy Cobham, as well as modern favorites, at least, you know, modern for the time this record came out, Metallica, Bjork, psychedelic and experimental rock and progressive rock bands such as, such, as, such, as, such as Nirvana, not Cobain and Company, the UK Nirvana, as well as Tangerine Dream. And Giorgio's on this thing too, Giorgio. And even though instrumental hip hop and turntablism up until this point, the art form up until this point in the mid 90s, influenced this album heavily, DJ Shadow takes that foundation and doesn't just kind of recreate it, he actually goes into other stylistic directions with it. Moodier, more open and vast, and sometimes kind of ambient directions. Really setting the tone for the more atmospheric approach a lot of hip hop instrumentals, modern hip hop instrumentals, take today. And if that's a bit of a stretch for you, this album is at least a precursor or a significant moment in time for the very warped and experimental approach that a lot of underground West Coast producers showcase even today. And this album's creativity is so great it even transcends the hip hop genre because this album for sure influenced plenty of introspective electronic music producers. Even the boys in Radiohead thought it was fantastic upon its release. It's release in 1996, which is kind of crazy to think of because of how progressive this album is stylistically and, and texturally, maybe not technically. I mean, there's certainly not a whole lot of flash to this album. And thanks to sort of modern music editing technology, there is sort of a, I guess, a, a, a rudimentary-ness about the music on this album. It doesn't sort of have a, that high level of detail a lot of production today has. So in one sense, even though this record does sound a little dated, it simultaneously for its time was kind of a sign of things things to come. And at least not now, I don't think its age really works against it because still today, introducing finds an incredible amount of power in very simple sample layering and transitions and rhythms. This record isn't really that much about flash anyway. It's really more of just a, a, a big, gorgeous mood record. Hypnotic repetitions, head bobbing grooves, pristine cavernous reverb melodies, and some wonderful just humming, just relaxing, alluring tones. Which again is part of why this album sort of transcends that whole instrumental hip hop label and sort of dips a bit into electronic music, down tempo, trip hop. There is over an hour of material on this record. It spans 13 tracks, some of which are broken up into a few parts, some intros and transitions and builds or just beat shifts. And a lot of the tracks on this LP span five, six, seven, nine minutes. We are talking some pretty ambitious lengths here for instrumental hip hop. Introducing is peppered with a few little interlude tracks here and there to kind of lighten the mood, like the intro track, which features some fantastic scratching, as well as why hip hop sucks in 96. It's the money. <coughs> the problem's worse now. And again, if you give this thing a listen with the instrumental hip hop tag, don't go into this thing necessarily expecting a series of just boom bappy, just hard hitting, hardcore flavored instrumentals. What you're gonna hear on this thing are just like vast atmospheres complemented with very punctuated, boomy, and just 
hulking slow rhythms. And some very pretty samples, as well as some, you know, kind of strange vocal snippets. And the fact that this album is going to go in that direction is very clear from the first full track on this thing, Building Steam with a Grain of Salt, which features this massive beat, pretty straightforward hip hop groove from the drums on this thing, but the very moody piano arpeggios on this track tell a very different story. Uh, they feel incredibly soundtrack music inspired, like I'm going to be watching some kind of hip hop flavored horror film. And the very resonant bass on this thing, the eerie background vocals and the vocal snippets, they all blend together very nicely. And again, soundtrack music is most definitely definitely an inspiration for Shadow on this record. I mean, just look at Giorgio on this album. And I believe the soundtrack uh, from Prince of Darkness is actually sampled at least a few times in the track listing here too. The pace of this record picks up on the next track here, the number song with some buzzing bass and a very kind of lo-fi, brittle, crispy drum beat. At least it kind of feels like a buzzing bass. Either that or like a buzzing organ or something like that. I feel like I'm listening to just this really loud, just a, a, a very, grainy organ rock jam. And I love the funk breakdown in the middle of this track too. It's a really nice change of pace and touch. And change-ups are a pretty significant part of the song Change Ling, which is one of the more subdued tracks on here, but it feels like this really fluid, in the moment jam between this ever-changing drum beat and all of the more melodic samples that Shadow pulls together in the mix here too. And the very eerie guitar leads that pop in at the end of this track are a beautiful touch as well. And they sort of glide this song from kind of feeling like this very, very slowed down, chill, laid back funk jazz to something just way more intergalactic, just rocketing off or maybe just floating up angelically into space. This record's centerpiece is the nine minute cut stem slash long stem slash transmission <laughs> two. And on this cut, DJ Shadow really just completely moves away from hip hop in a sense and embraces both soundtrack music and progressive synth music. I mean, this track sounds like the opening music to a really epic battle in this just harrowing tale of, I guess, intergalactic sci-fi war. Not only do the drums on this track have this just distorted, just punchy kind of industrial drum machine tone to them, but there's all these plucked arpeggios all over this track, some some very haunting background tones that kind of feel like uh, they're, they're orchestral a little bit hanging back there. And the drum beats on this track eventually work up to a very fast and speedy pace, really just blasting the song off into this very tense, explosive moment. We go from a track that just feels like it is not of this world to these tracks that feel, I don't know, just a little more playful in a sense. The song Organ Donor, which funnily enough samples an organ, it's really maybe the only track on this thing that I have an issue with, a big issue with, and that's that I just wish it was longer. I wish I was longer. And with this track and the song Mutual Slump, I think DJ Shadow does a great job here and, and across this record of kind of contrasting these slower, more laid back tracks with something a little more hard hitting and just in your face. Because on Mutual Slump, I mean the very fat overblown kick drum on this track as well as the screaming saxophone. Now this LP's final moments kicks off with the track Midnight in a Perfect World, which is really, a perfect, pristine piece of trip hop. You're getting these very laid back, easy going hip hop flavored rhythms together with these distant, very beautiful and gorgeous female vocals. And it is one of the most beautiful tracks in the track listing here. And of course, we kind of kick things up a notch once again on the song Napalm Brain, Scatterbrain, which is this, I guess, bit of alien funk from another dimension. The drum beat on this thing is so, tense and the bass, which is incredibly big, incredibly warm, actually brings a, a really nice groove to this drum beat. And this track actually makes an awesome and, uh, and very fluid and subtle progression toward this very speedy break beat. I mean, DJ Shadow instantaneously goes from, from what sounds like the West Coast to the UK just in a matter of seconds with just the, the flavor of the rhythms on this track. Closing track on here is fine. I mean, it's, it's maybe one of the more middling tracks on the LP here. It's a little 
vanilla in a sense. It's a, you know, a bit of a jazzy hip hop instrumental and it's it's very pleasant, it's very sweet on the ears, although I will say that the vocal snippets that are kind of worked into this track do feel kind of unsettling in a sense, a bit nightmarish. I will give this track kudos for sounding incredibly dreamlike for its time though. Uh, overall, I mean, this is a fantastic LP. Again, DJ Shadow, one of the trailblazers of this genre, and this album, I most definitely think, a sign of things to come for when it comes to just more experimental and adventurous approaches to hip hop production. DJ Shadow not only bent the rules of this style of music, when he was making this record, but he also, uh, in a refreshing way, didn't feel held back by this style of music and, and felt very comfortable and very at ease, at least from what I can hear, uh, because of the creativity of this record and, and the way that he kind of embraces these other musical art forms. He wasn't afraid to dip his toes into some soundtrack music, into some very dramatic trip hop music, into just some weird out there kind of progressive synth or ambient type stuff. And each time it's done pretty freaking well and it's pulled together into a what I think is very evocative, textured, very, very sound rich record. This thing's a classic. You already know that. That's why I'm reviewing it. It's almost 20 years old and still sounds fantastic in my opinion. If you haven't given this thing a listen, please do. And if you already have, I'm glad you have and I hope you enjoy it as much as me. If not more, and uh, yeah, that's it. You're the best. Transition. If you've given this album a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what album is classic too? I don't know any others. This is the only classic album I know. Forever.